Since a lot of people are coming out about disgusting acts of a lot of Minecraft YouTubers, especially from the Dream SMP, I decided to come out with my experience a couple of years back in 2021. I attended a party with some friends. Being 16, I wanted to fit in. I decided to drink alcohol for the first time. I quickly lost control and found myself in a vulnerable state. That's when Tubbo, who was at the party, offered me to take me home. I ended up passing out in the car, but instead of taking me home, he uh, drove me to a secluded parking lot. It was there where he made advances to to touch me inappropriately. Okay, first of all, 2021 was peak pandemic, peak lockdown. I didn't go to any parties. I didn't go out of my house. Can't fucking drive. I don't have a driver's license. Months ago in March of 2024, a Minecraft turned variational streamer, Tabo was accused of rape and sexual misconduct but we'll get back to that case later in this video. I started the video with a segment to give you a visualization of what has been occurring in the Minecraft content creation scene. Tabo, while not mainly making Minecraft content anymore, is still seen as a personality connected to Minecraft. This is because of his time during the pandemic when being a part of the Doom SMP. Minecraft back in early 2020 was nothing short of monumental for many people. After several years of irrelevancy, the game was receiving media traction thanks to in-game changes, attention from media figures, and more importantly, nostalgia. If we are being blunt in this talk, then Minecraft is a pretty simple game. You collect blocks, make things, and hide from mobs when it is night time. Minecraft was a hit game for many kids because of its simple yet intriguing gameplay. And those same kids that were fond of the game in its early stages grew up and became sentimental about the game. Remembering their memories of playing the game, sometimes alongside friends. So many people were starting to get into Minecraft again for nostalgic or other reasons. But it does not mean that Minecraft back then in the 2010s was all positives. In a video by I go by a lot of names, I miss their Skyblock videos, he goes into detail about the history of a certain franchise in Minecraft that does not even involve it playing the game at all, Monster School. The franchise was created by Willcraft, an animator that started making Minecraft animations in 2013. It was then taken over by other animators that soon popularized the franchise. It was just normal animations of Minecraft monsters doing educational lessons. What could go wrong? Oh, we just did this shit last video. Move on! Minecraft YouTube wasn't perfect, but it was still pretty tame when you venture in the mainstream stuff. So, nothing bad was really happening with the game itself, right? Yeah, this was a thing back then. The 2017 mob vote was a pretty interesting concept. It was the first of its kind and it became a stepping stone for other community centered events in Minecraft. And it also became a stepping stone for how much these voting events would bite the ass of the community. The mob that won and was added in the game was the Phantom. A lot of people surely loved it. I am not putting it lightly that Dream practically revolutionized Minecraft YouTube as a whole. I know what you're saying to yourself. Speed ones. Do I have to say anything else? Manhunt videos or simply just speed one in the game itself. This attention boost on the more skill based aspect of Minecraft also helped the competitive side of Minecraft. Person vs person videos as well as game modes such as Bed Wars were also experiencing a renaissance of inspired creators creating videos and events which increased the general public's interest in the combative side of Minecraft. In the middle of 2020, Minecraft released testing versions of their upcoming revolutionary update that saw the entirety of a dimension being changed, causing many speed ones to have to adapt to this new change. So Dream, alongside his friends and fellow content creators Sapnap and George Not Found, played on a normal server in a live stream to learn the new changes of the upcoming update. However, this would indirectly create one of the most impactful phenomena in the Minecraft scene, survival multiplayer servers or SMPs. After several other smaller creators were added to the server, some of them were inspired to create some sort of humorous narrative to create a video in order for them to get attention from being related to other larger creators. While it started off as just an improvised story, many other creators started throwing in ideas and soon developed a planned storyline for members to follow, to the point where bloopers were a thing on the server. Members started to become more like actors in the series which admittedly was a pretty weird concept. Entire live streams and gameplay of the server was most likely scripted and has not been seen in the Minecraft scene and yet it worked for some time. 
In the later parts of the series, the story became more supernatural, moving more distant from themes of personal and political themes, and venturing more into ideas that are not even possible in the original game, in which some features seen in the series have to be coded into the game. Many have raised doubts into the integrity of the series, criticizing the series for seemingly prioritizing a story rather than its integral part of its gameplay. However, it is undeniable how creators are benefiting from just being in the series. Most of the active members in the series were definitely smaller creators making content in the server. Many smaller creators are a part of the server, have videos that are their most viewed videos because of their connection with the Dream SMP. In early 2023, the server officially ended, mentions of season 2 were scrapped and until now, the server is officially coiled as a defunct series, with most members moving on into other ventures or creating their own Minecraft series. To say that the Dream SMP had an impact in the general Minecraft community would be an understatement. The concept of SMPs and storyline based series will become a trend in Minecraft YouTube. Creators were trying to replicate the same magic that the Dream SMP had, as well as adding many different twists and additions to the core gameplay that saw the same many criticisms that the Dream SMP had, which was the integrity of the gameplay, but also adding a new problem for this trend, repetitiveness. Many groups were trying to present a new, fresh, and unique concept but in the end, the very core aspect of this SMP was just becoming stale. On a side note, many other trends in Minecraft YouTube unrelated to Dream SMP was also receiving criticism of repetitiveness. Unlike the previous segment, I didn't state the other more severe issues that the Minecraft content creation was experiencing, and it is because I intended not to mention these issues because they are still relevant in the current state of Minecraft YouTube today. And I think it is a perfect time to go back to Tabo's allegations and dive right into the messy part of the video right away. Continuing the discussion regarding Tabo's cost B allegations, they were totally made up. Hours after Tabo responded to these allegations in a stream, the account behind the allegations would come out claiming that this was all just a social experiment testing how easy fake allegations spread throughout the internet. And while it seems like there is a somewhat reasonable argument during this, what a fucking loser. This is when I come out to say this whole thing was a major fucked up social experiment to show how easy it is for something dumb to go viral. So fucked up, dude. This isn't some fucked up social experiment, that's my fucking life. Now, it doesn't mean that all controversy to Minecraft creators are purely unjustifiable. Creators such as Wilbur Shoot, Line Maker, and Gene Bop were examples of how cancel culture in the Minecraft community has done more good than harm. Not everyone in the Minecraft community will be a decent person. But to say that this sort of behavior can be healthy for a general community is just not right. Most of the time, the public that position themselves as a judge in this kind of discussions are certainly not professionals in terms of concluding bad actions. So most often or not, public discussions regarding an allegation with no solid or concrete proof generates more conflict than resolution. Just ignoring the whole possibility of a person being guilty or not, Minecraft YouTubers have been getting so much flack and accusations that it is a running joke that becoming a Minecraft YouTuber increases your chances of being a not so decent person. With so much controversy and bad examples popularized in the Minecraft community, it just doesn't paint the community in a good light when things would often go out of proportion, perceiving the community as an unhealthy and toxic environment. <laughs> Minecraft Twitter. While repetitive content does impose itself as a valid criticism within content creation, it is only a natural part of content creation as a whole and does not impose seriously dangerous implications to watchers. What does inflict potential danger to watchers are inappropriate content. Now I know I have already made a lengthy series of videos talking about inappropriate content that are targeted to children, featuring Minecraft animations, issue that is still worth bringing up. I know this segment might be a little similar to the themes of repetitiveness in Minecraft YouTube, but I am directly talking about the entirety of Minecraft YouTube. Of course, 15 years and thousands of creators constantly making and coming up with new ideas for videos Minecraft will obviously become a very saturated market, becoming harder and harder to leave such an impact compared to earlier creators that have cemented themselves as legends of the game. If I tell you right now who is the icon of Minecraft, well anyone from the Dream SMP would usually come to mind, but hardly anyone from that branch is relevant in making Minecraft content today. 
must just actually making content. Someone from the 2010s could come into mind, but they're mostly just general gaming channels or have stopped making Minecraft content. As seen who truly is the current big hitter of Minecraft YouTube today. Well, I believe that the Minecraft content creation scene is currently going through a weird phase of different communities branching off into their own genres of Minecraft YouTube. If I haven't glazed the dream SMP enough in this video, the series was really a unifying object in the Minecraft community. Many were talking about it, tuning into every stream and video. It was truly a unification of different communities of Minecraft. The casual, competitive, multiplayer, and technical sides of Minecraft were very involved in the server and satisfied the many viewers. But nowadays the more successful Minecraft creators are usually situated in YouTube shorts. More successful because of how accessible the content is instead of how it impacted the community. Currently, the state of Minecraft YouTube is pretty much similar to Roblox YouTube. Many videos have themes or ideas pretty different from other videos yet still connected with the game and how they are presented. A whole bunch of communities within a game that are only unified to a game-wide event that saw many creators participating, but for Minecraft, there are not a ton of creator events anymore that unify different communities together under one event. But to oppose my own viewpoint, Minecraft YouTube was pretty much a community that was heavily influenced by the pandemic and many of its viewers soon less frequently participate in watching Minecraft content, much less even doing so after the pandemic. And I have frequently compared the Dream SMP to other times in Minecraft YouTube. It is unfair considering that the Dream SMP only became a cultural impact it was because of lack of things to do for most people to do in the pandemic. Not saying that it is the only reason why it blew up, but it is a major contribution. I don't remember if I ever stated this in this channel, but the success of the Dream SMP and many of its creators likely never be replicated in its magnitude ever. So in other words, the state of Minecraft YouTube is experiencing a change of distancing away from the Dream SMP era and into a new time of creators without the Dream SMP affiliation. To conclude this video, I would like to talk about Minecraft itself and distancing our focus away from Minecraft YouTube because even the current state of Minecraft today is pretty weird. Now, I am gonna base off a lot of major arguments from this video simply because I cannot find any article or sort of source of information that I need to present. So take my word with a big grain of salt in this case. Minecraft just feels like a weird game nowadays. An older version of the game being the most popular version of the game, not only does it feel like all sorts of additions to modding to new updates just feel meaningless to a lot of people, but it just can't be helped. A controversial combat system, optimization and performance issues, and in general the game feeling quite bland with the lack of new unique additions and just changing and improving other features which is still pretty cool, but the game still feels stale. Plus there are even accusations that a Mojang developer once stated that Microsoft, the owners of the franchise, is limiting their updates or the additions of features. I think the only obvious words to say right now to finish this video is that things will just never stay the same and most likely won't ever go back to how they used to be, even if you think or objectively think was a better time. So I guess it is better off just reminiscing the memories you had and not make a 9 page essay mindlessly talking about how shit Minecraft is right now, unless you put a couple of controversial people in the thumbnail, you get a ton of views.